Name go right there? Right here. <laughs> Dustin. Right there. This is your Relief Pitcher Show, the show where we probably have to put in the most research out of the, all the others because who's closing? And it could here? change from when you're watching this. It's, it's insane. Once you get into the lower tiers, but we've done a lot of the legwork for you to let you know who the guys are, so. We'll get so to click the button, go to the you know the rankings, print them off, have this next year draft day, especially with, you know just get on the site, get the cheat sheet, got the cheat sheet, all of our rankings on there. But let's start talking about some relief pitchers. Tier one, here's your talent right here. These are the guys you're most excited about: Jansen, Zach Britton, and and Chapman. You can't go wrong with these guys. They're gonna give you sub two ERAs more than likely, but the K per inning ratio is amazing for these guys and that's why they're in tier one. And we love looking at the K per inning ratio. That is such a big, big, big thing to look at when you're talking about closers. All right, tier two, first one I'm gonna go with is Edwin Diaz of Seattle. Thing I like about this guy, he is young and he throws the ball very hard. 51 innings, 88 Ks. That good. is what we call a good ratio. So when we see that, we're like, you know what? This guy might take another step. They say, you know, some people don't have him as high as us, but there's a reason we like him, and that's why. And then Mark Melanson, he is now with the San Francisco Giants. The thing about him is he's just been solid his entire career. He should get plenty of saves opportunities with the Giants, but that is one thing I want to note. Closer, sometimes it's a little bit tough to bank on save opportunities year after year, because what if the team wins by 10 runs? And is what? Not a save opportunity. So it's really hard to gauge that, so we really like to look at the peripherals instead. And one thing too, and one reason why we look at the K rate, is a lot of times the best closers, they're best at getting out of jams. And you do that right. with strikeouts. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, it's not always about strikeouts, but it definitely can help when you can. But just think logically here, right? Just like you have a closer, so, right. you know, they're not gonna get the huge blubs if they can get out of a jam that way. It definitely helps. Craig Kimbrell, ah. He's still in our top 10, but he used to be one of our top three Dude. guys. It's sad to see him down here, but you know, he still had you know, solid K rate, well over K per inning, but his ERA ballooned up to 3.4. He just did not look like himself, but we're not writing him off. We still think there's some potential there, obviously, for him to come back and have big years. He's only 28. And then Ken Giles, this is a guy we really liked coming into last year, and he kind of let us down but he still had 102 strikeouts in 65 innings, and he showed flashes, but his ERA was over four. But, so. Oh, he started so bad. It was, it was terrible. so bad. But he's. If we he, can admit our faults. He is only 26. There's still a very good chance he puts it together. So we are, again, with him, we're still excited about that, the K potential. As I go into tier four, first guy I'm talking about is Cody Allen. And poor Andrew Miller, he's gonna always be the setup guy because they're saying Cody Miller should be closing out there for the Indians. And again, it's good K rates, 68 innings, 68 innings, 87 Ks, obviously like that. And David Robertson, I've always loved him as a pitcher. I love watching him work and he's just solid. Again, you're gonna have those good stats, but the other thing about him, you know, his whip is great. His whip is only, was only one last year. And he, to me, is just one of those closers that seems to always drop a little bit farther than they should. So I always think you can get him at a discount on draft day. So if he's falling in your draft, know you got a very good, reliable closer whenever you get him. Tier five, still some decent talent here. Some guys that can, you know, definitely aren't gonna, you know, blow you away, but can give you solid save counts and not really kill you in ERA. Adam Odovino is very interesting. Over a K per inning, sub three ERA last year. It's gonna be interesting to see how he does as the full-time closer. We get to see a full year out of him, but he's got some nasty stuff. I like his upside. And then Neftali Feliz. If you've been watching us over the years, you know that I love this guy. He's, I always say it, he, he made a 100 Monarch fastball look easy. He doesn't quite have that type of stuff anymore, but he's still a very legit pitcher. He's getting a, new, a chance, a new home with Milwaukee, and I'm excited to see what he can do, but he's down here in tier five for a reason. He's still a gamble on draft. And Dustin didn't want to put him at like tier three. We'd have to argue this year. We didn't have so to argue. I'm, I'm very reasonable. proud of you. You're reasonable. growing up. You know, he's a father and all of everything, so. He's all right, Sean Kelly for the Nationals. I'm moving to tier six, I wanna talk about him. It, he's right now looks like he's gonna be the closers. The Nationals are gonna be one of the odds on favorites to win it all in Vegas, which means they will get wins. To get closes, you need to get wins, but the, or to get saves, you need to get wins. The problem is 
I don't know if Sean Kelly is right now. Looks like he's got the job, but it seems like they're trying to make some deals, do some things to change that. So keep that in mind. But if he goes super, super late on draft day and you can grab him and he stays in and he does well, I mean, it's gonna be great value. And then I wanna talk about Tony Watson of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You know, this 31 year old has been solid. Last year he had 15 saves, he had 23 holds. So he's, you know, this ain't his first gig. He ain't a youngster, he's been around the block. And again, he's one of those guys later in drafts that people will just forget about and you'll be able to get super late, but he does have value. He's, he's in a battle though, keep that in mind. So watch the spring train, just like, just like I was talking about with Kelly, if a move happens, Watson's actually in a battle currently. It looks like he's winning right now, but spring train is gonna really prove what ends up happening there. Heading down to tier seven, we're starting to scrap a little bit more, trying to you know get to the end of your draft, you're just trying to find some saves. Most of these guys are older, but still, you know, saves a save, they can still give you some upside. Houston Street, I want to talk about him. As of now, he's the favorite to close for the Angels. As long as he can stay healthy, he probably will keep that job, but that's only if he can do better than what he did last year with his 6.45 ERA and limited work. But if Street's healthy, he can still get it done, but he's down here because of the injury stuff. Then I want to talk about Glenn Perkins from Minnesota. He's probably not going to be ready for the season, so he's, you know, he might start in the season on DL or whatever. He should eventually take that job back over. In the next tier, you'll see Kensler. It looks like he's going to be the guy that is starting the season as the closer, but you know, it could be an opportunity for him. We'll see. But Perkins, as of now, looks like we'll be the guy to own you know, a month or so into the season. So other than the Minnesota situation, when you're looking at tier eight, those first three guys there, those are the setup men. So if you're looking, you really gotta pay attention to your league settings. If you want holds or how the ratios work and the league settings, and everyone's, sometimes they'll ask us like, hey, you know, who's not a closer that I should be drafting? Here are the three names that you should write down. And there's even leagues where I have any minimums or, or per week, the minimums that you should hit. I love just plugging these guys in because they're gonna get you you know, a ton of outs. They're not going to give up any home runs or well, not. Of course, they will at some point. But these are the <laughs> standard good guys. Well, you never know, you know. Again, or Andrew he, Miller. He'd be closing for almost any other team in the ooh, league. Ooh, uh, Nationals could trade for him. I it could see. Have, I do like I Andrew Miller that. as a guy to just target, you know, if, if Allen starts to slip or if there's an injury. Or, or a trade. Or a trade. Why would the Nationals not be going after him right now? Because of the price tag, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a bad guy to target late, just to hold and see what happens, depending on your league settings. Heard it here first, Andrew Miller to the Nationals. <laughs> Brett Nimco, Fantasy Smack Talk. But these can change. Pay attention to spring training. Some of these are still battles going on. So check back with our rankings. Go download our cheat sheet. It's the, uh, since it is the relief pitchers, closers, I would like you to get the save. I'm passing the ball to you. Oh, that was so good and they don't know how good it was. <laughs> But it was good, ladies and gentlemen. It was Hit good. The camera.